from London, England, it's The Q, covering Discover 2016 London, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Hi, everybody. Welcome to HPE Discover London 2016. This is Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. I'm here with Paul Gillen, my co-host. Uh, Paul, we're right, uh, right last summer we were together doing the uh, HPE Big Data Conference, and here we are at HPE Discover. You were just asking me how many Discovers we've done. We're, we're getting close to 10 now, uh, because we do one in June um, in, in Las Vegas, the US version, and of course, the European version. This, I believe, is our fourth European Discover. We did one in Frankfurt, two in Barcelona. This is, our, I think, our second or maybe even third in London now. So, but the bottom line here is we're seeing HPE in transition. It's Meg, Meg Whitman's about fifth year into a transformative uh, initiative that she undertook when she uh, took the company on, and she said it was going to take about five years. We've seen the company split in two. Uh, that was the big theme last year in London. Um, and of course this summer um, we heard HP, or this spring, continuing to shore up the balance sheet, uh, uh, doing spin merges with things like CSC. We heard a, a recent announcement of a, of a spin merge with the software division, which we speculated about in, in Boston. Um, so we now see an HP that I've been saying for a number of years, HPE has to, or HP, and now HPE has to shrink to grow. The company eked out about a 2% growth annually, even though it's fourth quarter, uh, was not a growth quarter, uh, but we're here with a leaner, meaner HP. Well, certainly it's a leaner HP. Uh, they've focused down, they've gotten rid of the, uh, the divisions that were not strategic, the consulting division, the software group. The software group is sort of shunted to a, a, a back, uh, backwater here on, on the show floor. Uh, very focused on hardware being, as you've said, Dave, and, uh, the arm supplier to the cloud. And uh, this morning, uh, a new announcement from HPE, the, uh, the machine, the, the long talked about revolutionary next generation architecture. Uh, they're showing prototypes, they're talking about delivering components of it in 2018 to 2019. Uh, this could be the transformative architecture for HP, could vault them to the front of the, uh, of the industry again. And uh, I think they needed something big to kick off this show. And certainly they're going to have people talking. They have a working prototype they're demonstrating on the floor. Uh, we'll be able to get over there later today and see exactly exactly what is working about it, uh, but a company that's very focused on, on its hardware business, its uh, servers, its uh, storage, uh, with its Aruba Networks acquisition, uh, a, a strong story to tell in the Internet of Things, and uh, really we're seeing it, HP very focused now on where it, it is going forward. It's a matter of execution. Yeah, Paul, the messages we're going to be hearing this week, obviously you hear a lot about digital transformation. It's HP strategy to essentially be the infrastructure that powers digital transformations. Um, so we're talking about compute, networking, and storage. Uh, or, by the way, HP's recently reorganized. We'll talk about that a little bit. And also, sort of the, the newer initiative, which is the, what HPE calls the intelligent edge, the Internet of Things. HP is actually in a pretty good position to do this uh, with its is its ability to distribute compute, um, its ecosystem that it's developing. So what's happened is because now they've, they've spun merged the old EDS business into CSC, and now they're spinning in the software business to micro focus, it opens up a whole new set of partnering opportunities for, for HPE. So companies like Accenture and Ernie Young and or I guess ENY and how they call themselves, uh, certainly PwC, KPMG, et cetera, and others who used to somewhat compete head on with EDS, now that is shed. So they can open up uh, the partnership ecosystem to folks like that, SIs like that. As well, you're going to hear a lot of focus on some new emerging cloud technologies like Docker and Mesosphere and others uh, that HPE is bringing in uh, to its fold. And of course, it's got to extend its ecosystem to achieve this intelligent edge. So we're going to hear a lot about that this week. Um, from a financial perspective, the good news is uh, these spin mergers have allowed HPE to clean up its balance sheet. It's now got about $13 billion of cash on, on the balance sheet, which exceeds its long-term debt, which is the first time in a long time that that's occurred. So now it's in a position where it has to, to do strategic acquisitions. You mentioned Aruba, which seems to be working out very well. Aruba, to me, Paul, is critical because 
you know, you want to instrument the windmill. Everybody talks about instrumenting the Internet of Things, but in, before you instrument it, you have to have connectivity. And that's really what Aruba brings with its, with its wireless capability. Well, the, the question about the Internet of Things is where do you process the data? And I think the consensus is emerging that transmitting all that data over the network back to the cloud, back to the data center, is not really practical when you get into large scale. HP's, HP's uh, strategy is you put the intelligence at the edge of the network. You do a lot of the, uh, of the analytics and the, uh, uh, the basic uh, edge processing uh, goes, on, goes on at the edge and then you send back to the network, to the data center, only what matters. Uh, I think that's very much in line with the strategy that, uh, that is developing uh, across the network. As David Floyer said in a recent uh, Wikibon uh, uh, research alert that uh, the edge really is how the Internet of Things is going to develop. It's the only intelligent way to build large scale networks. And Aruba is a critical component of that because it is a, a first class wireless network. They have all of the, uh, support all the major protocols and th they have a chance with Aruba, I think, to develop an architecture that others will adopt, their partners will adopt as a mature way to process data in large scale Internet of Things uh, environments. The other thing we'll hear a lot about is hybrid IT. Uh, as you know, Paul, HP several years ago announced that it was intending to get into the public cloud to compete directly with, with AWS. Uh, it backed off of that very quickly after it announced that and said, you know what, this is not our strategy. As you pointed out, they really are an arms dealer to the cloud. And so what you're, you're going to hear a lot about is how to enable hybrid IT, hybrid cloud, HP's reorganized, as I mentioned earlier, where they folded the, the, what was the separate cloud division into uh, an organization under Antonio Neri. So HP is sort of consolidating a, a lot of its bespoke activities around Antonio Neri's organization. So the compute, the networking, and the storage are now under him, as well as the, 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 the cloud group and the services division, which Antonio used to run, which by the way, the services division had a killer quarter. And I don't know if yeah. that's because of the new focus or it's just sort of cycles, but it really is starting to to power some of, of what's going on at well, HP. Well, HP is doing some very large integration projects. You know, they've, they've recently done the, uh, the American Airlines, uh, US Airways, they've done, I think, three major uh, integration projects involving uh, airline mergers, which, you know, you don't get projects that are much bigger than that. So, clearly, they're establishing a, uh, a center of excellence with their services business, and as you said, it grew very strongly in the fourth so, quarter. So, I like to look at organizations, because they sort of give you an indication of, of what the company is thinking, and so, as I say, they've consolidated a lot of the, the, the product functions under Antonio Neri, those three that I mentioned, compute, storage, and, and networking, and they've done that under, under two individuals that will be on theCUBE. Uh, 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 Alain Andrioli runs the, the compute and the storage, sort of the, the, the piece part, if you will, the, where people want it, the channel wants to configure its own, sort of roll your own, and then uh, Rick Lewis runs the, the converged infrastructure and the software defined pieces, and the cloud was folded under him, both reporting up to Antonio. So you could see they essentially cleaned up, in my view, the infrastructure piece, because let's face it, cloud, as HP sort of defines cloud, is really infrastructure. So, so they, they probably had some interesting things going on internally, which, by the way, is not necessarily a bad thing. They, they wanted the cloud group to go out and do some ice breaking, which happened, and they're very clear they had to consolidate that in. And then, under uh, 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 Dominic Orr, you've got the, the Internet of Things. Uh, and so that's where the, uh, I, I believe, the Aruba piece fits in and, all, and other intelligent edge pieces fit in. And so, so it's a much more streamlined organization. It's still $50 billion, so it's not a small organization, but it's much smaller than the $120 billion you know, monolith that was HP. And it's past. still the worldwide leader in, in, store, uh, in servers by a fairly uh, uh, substantial margin. In the earnings call last week, Meg Whitman said that really the only part of the business that had underperformed in the most recent quarter was the core server business. Uh, if they, and, and she said that's a fixable problem. Uh, she said hyperconverge is going very strongly, storage is doing very well, uh, Aruba is doing well, service is going well. If they can get the core server business firing on all cylinders, which is really a sales problem, then uh, she was painting a very optimistic picture of growth. And I think that's a question. You know, as we look at these big legacy giants like IBM, like HP, trying to make uh, trying to make a transition, when does they do they tip? When does that tipping point arrive that they begin to grow the business in the new areas uh, as the the, the uh, legacy business declines? And I think the question we're going to be asking coming out of this or going into this event is: uh, Is this a growth story or is this a an asset management story? Well, certainly a cash flow story. HP threw off. $2.1 billion in free cash flow last year, which was above its expectations, and it returned $3 billion to shareholders in the form of 
dividends and stock buybacks, and so the stock's actually doing quite well as a function of you know, reducing the float. Uh, so they've used that cash um, in a number of ways. So these large companies, IBM, HPE, you know, Oracle, EMC before it went private with the acquisition by Dell, all threw off a lot of cash. So they are cash flow machines, they all face a similar dynamic in that the new stuff, while it's growing very quickly, is not growing fast enough and is not large enough to offset the decline in the old. Um, you see a classic case with, within HPE is 3PAR. I call 3PAR the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> so uh, 3PAR was an acquisition it made you know, back in the herd days for $2.5 billion, and, uh, and it's delivered. Uh, uh, it, it's a leader in all flash, uh, it has shored up the company's storage portfolio. Half of the company's business now, the three part, the division's business, is all flash. So there's a ways to go, and only, by the way, probably only well, less than 20% of the market is all flash. And so there's opportunities for upside there, but they've been squeezing a lot of juice out of that lemon for a while. But that's an example, Paul, of, of a situation where, where the three part business still has, has you know, it's, it eked out and there's some nice growth actually, but it's not been enough to offset the declines in the older MSA business. So HPE's business still tends to be lumpy. And so you saw, you pointed out, ISS you know, didn't perform last quarter. Several quarters ago, it was the, the big star. And so these are product cycles. And so I, I think to answer your, your question and to your point, these are large companies, uh, diversified portfolios, where pieces are going to click, pieces aren't. And the key for, from my standpoint is they got to throw off cash, to be able to keep the balance sheet stable, do intelligent tuck-in acquisitions, like the Aruba acquisition, which appears to be very good. 3PAR, I think, was a big, massive, you know, massive 2.5 billion, I mean, that massive, but pretty big acquisition, kind of a no-brainer to fill a hole. So, increasingly, tuck-ins to support, essentially, their infrastructure business, and maybe even shore up some pieces of what used to be software in a, very complex portfolio, which is now going to be gone under microfocus. but are there things that they can do in software to support their infrastructure business? That's the kind of thing that we want to look for going forward. And, they, and the, uh, acquisitions are a big question mark. Uh, a lot of speculation in the last quarterly results about whether uh, HP's impressive balance sheet, uh, the, the amount of cash that they have, is this the time that they're going to go fishing for some big acquisitions? As you know, the HP, the HP of old uh, really was a, a good, uh, a company at managing acquisitions, much of HP was built from acquisitions, and HPE now in a position where uh, they have the cash to do to go after some big fish. Are they going to go after big fish, or are they going to, you know, like a Nutanix in the hyperconverged area, or are they going to focus on smaller players and and uh, uh, collect this, you know, this patchwork into into something more? Cohesive? Well, that was a rumor this summer that they were going to actually spin out the software division and buy Nutanix. I don't think that's going to happen now in Nutanix IPO. And then there was a rumor in the Register about them buying SimpliVity for four billion dollars. That's not going to happen. Uh, I think that was sort of a red herring by some simplicity to get some more cash. <laughs> but, but so, and then the other big rumor, of course, that if uh, Hillary Clinton won, that Meg was going to go work for administration. That's obviously not going to happen now. So we can sort of put that rumor to bed. You know, Meg is here at least for you know some period of time to sort of keep driving the ship. All right. So Paul Gill and I will be back. We're going to be covering HPE Discover from London wall-to-wall -wall coverage for the next three days. Uh, we've obviously got a, a, a simultask going on uh, at uh, 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 Amazon reInvent where John Furrier and Stu Miniman and company are there, but Paul and I are here all week. Keep right there, buddy, we'll be right back. This is theCUBE, we're live from London. <laughs>